Hello everybody, welcome back to another Business of Trucking video. Today we're going to talk about having your own authority. Now, there can be a lot of record keeping involved and we're going to go through every month of the year and I'm going to talk about the things you need to do to stay compliant, keep your authority active, and stay out of trouble. This is kind of the minimum uh, that you need to do. Uh, individual states, sometimes if you live in a state that I'm not familiar with, could have potential filings. We can't possibly cover every little state, but this is uh, if you do these things, you will you will be compliant and able to operate. So uh, it should be known that some of these things, although they might file one month or fall one month for me, might fall another month for you, such as IRP. Your IRP gets renewed. Say you originally filed for it in March. Well, then every year after that, it would be due for renewal in March. Whereas uh, mine, you know, I originally filed for it in May. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to talk about the time of year when I do everything. And if there's certain things that can vary, I'll mention that along the way. Now, it's a good idea to make yourself a checklist. Like I do, I keep this notebook here of notes for myself so that you don't forget. And uh, then you don't have to stress it. You know, you just, oh, it's uh, February. Let me check my notebook and see what I have to do for February. So let's get started here. Now, there's a lot of things, like I said, that don't have to necessarily happen at the same time uh, for each person every year. So I like to load up January. I like to get a lot of things done in January so I can kind of sort of coast the rest of the year. So in January, uh, number one, it's time to pull your clearinghouse queries. So go into the clear. Oh, and incidentally, uh, I have videos on a lot of these things. I will put links to the each video in the description below this, such as clearinghouse, most all your different quarterly filings, if the Kentucky uh, 2290, I got several videos on that. I'm going to load up the description in this video with links. So if you're like, oh, he talked about filing a 2290, what the heck is that? Well, go click on these videos and you will see, okay? Help you out. Now, let's start, okay, clearing house for January. It is time, one of those things, doesn't have to be January, but it's time to pull your uh, query yourself, okay? Que if you're one guy with one truck, you gotta query yourself. If people uh, drive for your company, you have to query them. Uh, I like to get that over and done with, so I don't have to worry about it the rest of the year. Also, uh, there's a form in the, in the driver qualification file for an annual review of driving uh, violations, any kind of tickets, any kind of accidents. Every driver must fill one out annually. You decide when and turn it into the company. This is important. It's part of keeping up on that driver qualification file, which is one of the biggest things that they will ever look for if you get audited. Okay, and then also, it's a good time to pull every driver's DMV record, their driver abstract. You can do that whenever. Uh, I like it done all, all at the same time for myself. Um, and then just go through every driver's driver qualification file, make sure everything's up to date. Uh, did they move? Did they change an address? Uh, did they renew their driver's license? You should have a, a current copy of that. Okay, just, just go through the DQ files and see that everything's up to date. Now, uh, I also like to go into my Kentucky uh, uh, account and just double check my taxable inventory. When you file a quarterly Kentucky return, you can check it then. Uh, I like to just verify mine. I actually check it every quarter when I file just to make sure that nothing accidentally got deleted or something or uh, there was a computer error. Make sure all your trucks are in their taxable inventory if they're going to travel through the state of Kentucky. Uh, I like to update my MCS 150 in January. Now this is a the MCS 150 is a biennial thing that needs to be updated. It means every two years. I do it's it's free, it's easy. I just do mine every year. That way if I forget a year, it just falls back to last year and I'm covered. Uh, and I like everything to be current. Especially now that and sidebar here, especially now that I'm growing as a carrier, uh, I've had several brokers check to see how many trucks you have. I had it happen again today, okay? A broker wouldn't give us a load because I had less than 10 trucks. Uh, used to, I had a broker a while ago say uh, I was less than five trucks. I'm like, well, I'm seven. They're like, well, your FMCSA says you're, you're one. I'm like, well, let me update that. 
So I got it updated. As some of that information can matter uh, in, in ways that you don't think of. So I like to update my MCS 150 every year in January. Now, it is time in January, you have to the end of January, to file your quarterly uh, items from the previous year, which would be your New Mexico quarterly, Kentucky, Oregon, New York, and your IFTA fuel tax. All those things from fourth quarter of the previous year. Uh, generally had to the end of January to get those done. And also, uh, your quarterly IRS payment for fourth quarter of last year is due in January if you did not pay that yet. So that's everything I like to do in January. Uh, February, now, so I don't have to repeat it every month here. Uh, with the Oregon situation for the permits, uh, you may be a monthly filer. You may be a quarterly filer. So if you are a monthly filer, you have to file an Oregon return every month throughout the year, whether you had miles or not. If you uh, have worked your way into where you're a quarterly filer, we'll just talk about that each quarter here. So I don't want, I'm not going to repeat Oregon. Every, or if I say Oregon every month, then you know what I'm talking about. In February... I don't, and I'm, once again, I'm reading right off my list. I don't have a lot going on. I try to set it up so that my DOT physicals uh, are are due in February every year. Uh, I'm on an annual. You might be on a, on a two year, but uh, at some point in the year, don't forget to renew your DOT physicals for you and everybody that drives. And don't forget, they need to need to be updated, uh, uploaded to your state's website and select a tier uh, of operation. Make sure you select the proper tier. Okay, in March, we have something that a lot of people might not know about and I have not talked about yet. Um, Arkansas, the state of Arkansas has what's called an ad valorem tax, which is uh, ad valorem means according to value, where you will be taxed on the value of your equipment. So now this is, once again, if you have your own authority, if you're leased onto a company, uh, most likely they're handling this, okay? Uh, you will receive a, a return in March. You should receive it in March. Sometimes they're a little off on that, okay, uh, for you to fill out. You, it'll, you'll report your miles and the value of your equipment or whatever and send it back. Then you won't hear anything for a while. We'll come back to that a little later, okay? And, uh, okay, Arkansas, we talked about that. Uh, Oregon, you know what that's about. And then March is a good time if you haven't yet. Uh, get your stuff together for your tax return, your IRS tax return, okay? Uh, really start getting serious about that, getting it done. So let's move on to April, okay? Uh, in April, your obviously your taxes are due. And uh, whatever money you owe uh, for your annual tax return and your first quarter uh, taxes will be due in April. Also, it, you, it is time to file by the end of April, uh, first quarter of New Mexico, New York, Kentucky, Oregon, and IFTA again. All right. Now in May, uh, and this is going to vary for everybody, like I said, uh, time to renew that IRP plate. So basically gather up your IFTA records for the whatever four quarters that they indicate on your application and sit down and file for the uh, renewal of your IRP plate. And uh, don't be late on that. Also, uh, definitely get that in ahead of time because if you have trucks on the road, you need to have those stickers. So, you know, if you got, if you don't see them all that often, you gotta get them back, get them stickers on, you get that permit in the truck. Uh, and also uh, in May, and this will probably be the same month as you renew your IRP for most people, uh, or close to it. It's time to renew that insurance. So, get a head. You want to get a head start on renewing your insurance, uh, just in case you you need to shop it around. Uh, insurance rates are going crazy, and uh, you might get hit with an unexpected uh, insurance amount. So, give yourself a little breather room there, so you don't have to make a snap judgment last minute. Let's move on to June. Okay, in June, once again, you. Bunthy, Oregon. Uh, in June, I try to have most of my equipment DOT'd. Uh, trucks, trailers, I actually like to do it a little more often than that. But uh, at minimum, the, the yearly annual inspections, 
I like to have done in June. I got kind of scattered with that here and there with adding some new equipment, but come June, I try to get all in and have it done. So it's all on the same schedule and I'm not searching around all year trying to figure out, oh crap, there's a DOT inspection due here. Uh, I know what to expect. Okay. And uh, in June, it's time to pay uh, pay the piper again, IRS uh, second quarter, time, time to pay up. Now, uh, this is another thing that could vary for you. Whatever business entity you selected, um, I started with an LLC, okay, and, and and I filed for it originally in June, the first time I ever filed for it, way back in in uh, uh, 2005, I believe. It will annually be due for its annual update in that same month every year going forward. Mine happens to be in June. Whatever month you started, keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you are a corporation, you will have uh, filings other than that. Uh, quarterly and such that you need to keep up on. And I advise having a good tax professional for that. Uh, if you're a corporation, you cannot mess around with a corporation. You have to do things right. Let's get into July. July, it's time where you can file your annual 2290 uh, heavy highway vehicle use tax uh, for a sleeper cab, tractor, 80,000 pound gross vehicle weight. It is $550. And uh, July, you can start filing. And I have three different videos on that. One to file it originally, one to get a refund, and one to kind of change vehicles partway through the year. So it's uh, if you sit down and put your mind to it, you can do all those for yourself. Uh, also in July, it's time to do your second quarter, Kentucky, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, IFTA for second quarter is due by the end of July. One of those things, uh, these things need to be done on a schedule every year. August, not much going on for me. September, nothing really for me. Now getting into October. October, typically you can start filing for your UCR. Uh, sometimes they get behind in that and alter the schedule. It's getting better than when they first came out with it. They would say, oh, it's not ready yet. It's not ready yet. Uh, but this year they had it out on schedule. So file it for your UCR. Um in October. Uh, let's see here. Uh, also, uh, I renew my IFTA permit and get my IFTA stickers in October just to be ahead of the game and have them ready to go on the trucks uh, before the end of the year. Uh, October, you can renew your New Mexico permit. Okay, go through your inventory. If there's trucks on there that you no longer have or no longer on the road, don't renew the permits. Uh, just renew the permits for the ones you're going to have for the following year. Um, and then it's time for, once again, uh, do you, it's time for your quarterlies, Kentucky, New, New York, New Mexico, Oregon, and IFTA. Well, it seems like uh, we're doing those all the time, doesn't it? Just taxes, 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 if you have your own authority. Seems never ending. Also time to pay the piper again for the IRS uh, for the uh, third quarter, that would be. And then every three years, this permit does not renew every year, and it does not always renew the same month as it did last time. Uh, this year, it was time to renew New York hut stickers uh, come October. So we got that uh, sent in, and those will be good for three years typically, uh, unless New York decides otherwise and says, hey, give me some more money before that. So that's it for October, November. Okay. Let's come back to that Arkansas ad valorem. Now, back in September, typically, you would receive a notice of how much your Arkansas... Remember when you filled out the, the statement in March? Usually around September-ish, they'll send you a notice in the mail that says, hey, this is how much you're going to owe. Now we're in November, and that bill is due. Okay? Um, I never got my notice in September this year. Don't know why, but never got it. So I imagine... November is going to roll around and I'm just going to get a bill in the mail from Arkansas and we'll have to pay it. Uh, it's not really that bad. Uh, like I said, it depends on the value of your equipment, blah, blah, blah. But uh, that's November. And then uh, December, don't really have much going on either. Your your fourth quarter uh, items are not technically due until January. So not a whole heck of a lot going on for me in the month of December. But like I said, check the 
links in the description below for how to do a lot of these things. Make yourself a cheat sheet, keep a notebook, keep whatever, stay compliant. It's a whole lot easier. Although those, these things seem daunting, it's a whole lot easier to do them than it is to uh, try to get right after you get caught for not doing them or having them. So everybody take care. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button on the way out. And uh, let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. And we will see you next time.